So the marketing message needs to be specific to the needs and aspirations and problems of the people and organizations in that market. Business of Architecture UK, episode 65. Hello and welcome. My name's Brian Willard and I am the host of the Business of Architecture UK. So welcome to another fabulous episode. This week I am speaking internationally uh, with one person in, they were in France, and the other person was in California, and we were all connected via this wonderful medium of the internet on uh, on Zoom. And um, it was my good friends Eric Bobro and Richard Petri, who are the co-founders, uh, along with uh, Enoch Sears, who, who was one of the original co-founders as well, of the Architect Marketing Institute. Now, uh, the Architect Marketing Institute is one of the leading providers of marketing training and resources for architects. It's a consultant firm um, who really focused on helping architects win better projects through effective marketing. So it was really great to be able to sit down with these two leading um, thinkers in the world of architectural marketing strategies uh, and kind of really go into a lot of depth about the sort of mistakes that architects make with their marketing, what marketing actually is and how architects can become more effective in their communication in order to be able to win and attract better, higher quality types of clients. So a little bit of background, Eric um, Eric Bobro is one of the foremost internet marketing strategists for architects. He's helped hundreds of architects around the world, including one firm in the UK, actually, who was able to add an extra $500,000 of billings directly as a result of his consulting work on their online marketing strategy. Um, and he's also one of the leading education providers for Archicad as well. Uh, Richard Petri is one of the world's leading architect marketing coaches. He's got a degree in marketing from the University of Canterbury in New Zealand. Formerly, interesting actually, he was a athlete. He was a professional cricket player for the National New Zealand team. And he brings that kind of high level of athletic competition and mindset into his work. He's also the author of the book, What to Do When Your Marketing Sucks. And he's consulted with business leaders and dignitaries all around the world. So sit back and relax. Here is Eric Bobro and Richard Petrie. Special announcement here. We at the Business of Architecture UK love to help you win more great clients and projects. And we've got a really cool opportunity for you. Our affiliate colleagues over at the Architects Marketing Institute would like to offer you a very special 45-minute one-on-one breakthrough call with one of their senior marketing experts. Now, the Architects Marketing Institute, which was co-founded by my good friends, Eric Bobro, Richard Petrie, and also Enoch Sears was one of the original founding members. So these guys really are some of the world's leading marketeers for architects. So you're going to be in very, very good hands. And on this call, the Architects Marketing Institute, or AMI, will help you map out a simple action plan. And this is going to be based on their experience of working with hundreds of architects around the world where they've helped them increase their income and the quality of their projects. And it's going to be tailored to you, depending on your budget and your goals and, of course, your ability to be able to implement. So the Architects Marketing Institute, just like us at the Business of Architecture UK, absolutely adore and love helping architects and want to help you attract more and win better opportunities for your practice. So that is the one-on-one -on -one session with AMI, Architects Marketing Institute. It's a free session, but in order to be able to qualify to have one of these sessions, there are a few required criteria. And the first one of those is that you are the owner, partner, or main decision maker for an architecture practice or design-related business you must be able to have the ability to provide exceptional service and results for your clients. And finally, you must be targeting at least a further £100,000 in additional revenue for your practice. So if that sounds like you and you want to speak to one of the Architects Marketing Institute senior advisors, jump on one of those breakthrough session phone calls, click on the link that's provided in the information and AMI will be very happy to speak with you. And then after your successes, you can come and tell me all about it on the Business of Architecture UK. Richard and Eric, welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. Absolute pleasure to have you on the show. We've got Eric, you are in Northern California, is that right? That's correct, just north of San Francisco. 
Fantastic. And Richard, you are currently near or in the Alps in France. Yeah, it's great. It's 25 minutes from Chamonix. And, you're, and originally you are from New Zealand. Correct. And I'm still from New Zealand. We'll, we'll be going back there in three weeks, but um, I like to live in different places. Brilliant. And so you guys are the co-founders of the Architects Marketing Institute. So what is the Architects Marketing Institute? Eric. Um, we're an organization focused on helping architects with marketing strategies, effective ways to communicate your value, um, and win and attract more and better clients and projects. Um, Richard and I have been working together for the last six years. Um, I've been working with architects for about 30 years uh, as a technology consultant, and then in the last maybe about eight years, marketing. And Richard and I got acquainted uh, about six years ago when he started working with an architect having really fantastic success. And, uh, you know, we connected and said, how are you doing this? And what are you teaching them? And uh, so the AMI, you know, started out of that exchange. So you guys have been working with architects all over the world, primarily helping them with their online marketing or all sorts of different types of marketing. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Richard, you take it. Well, no, all sorts, anything that gets them clients and projects. So online is just one aspect of it, but I don't know it's the best way for architects. I think I think some of the old school stuff done right, um, you know, most architects will probably get 80 to 70 to 80% of their business from re referrals and word of mouth, and yet they do, do, do nothing to get those referrals particularly. And so, you know, some of my favorite strategies around giving them systems because if we can double the referrals that people get, happy days, right? Um, we, you don't need to do anything else. I mean, there's a lot of fancy, shiny stuff that you can do online and all that type of stuff, but it's really hard work sometimes. And um, sometimes if you just do referrals really well, it's all you need. We've been doing a lot of webinars recently. Eric's been driving me into the ground. <laughs> and I'm now lost my voice. But, you know, we're going to bang it out for you guys in the UK. <laughs> we like architects and we like the UK. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, so, so, so why do architects need help with their marketing? Or, or step back a bit. What is marketing? How does it, you know, why should architects be engaging with it? Good question. Well, I'll quickly answer this one. Eric can, can come on on top. But they need marketing because they're terrible at it. Right? <laughs> we'll be honest here. We, we won't. You know, we won't sugarcoat anything. Architects are terrible at marketing. They hate marketing. They're not very good at it. They do it badly when they try it. And then they get scared and do nothing. So, you know, marketing is just getting clients. So my definition of marketing is marketing is about finding out what people want, your ideal clients, and then giving it to them. That's marketing. So it's nothing sleazy or I like sales. You know, I like selling stuff and I like marketing because I've got a healthy attitude towards it. It's about helping people. So um, why do they need marketing? <clears throat> if you need better clients or you need higher fees, then you're going to need marketing because marketing is going to help you communicate your value to the people you want to attract. And what are the, what are the mistakes that architects make then when they do do marketing and when they are doing it badly? How much, how much time have we got? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to they make. Yeah, Les, yeah. What, 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 are the, what are the killers? Oh, well, for me, and Eric will have maybe have some different ones. One of the biggest killers, the one I hate seeing, because uh, it really devalues the whole industry, um, is giving away too much free advice right. prior to, to signing people up. So I see, and, and guys and ladies, think about you know, the co the misbelief is that if I give away good advice and maybe some sketches and I'm really helpful and I tell you how to solve these problems and I give you ideas for what you can do, if I do that for you, you'll like me and you'll think I'm really helpful and then you'll hire me to do the design, right? That's the belief. It's generally a myth. It works sometimes. But think of yourself as a magician, in fact, it's very similar to our, uh, marketing as well. But think of yourself as a magician. If you turn up to a party and tell everybody how you're going to do your tricks in advance, what sort of magician are you going to be? Right? It's, 
what do they need you for? Once you've shown them the magic tricks and how it's all done, what do they need the show for? They don't. They take your ideas and they run away and they give it to a draftsman or a cheap architect down the road who will do it for less. Right. So don't give away free advice. That's, that's my big... Uh, so how, 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 can, how can we as architects not give away free advice? How can we... Because, I mean, I mean, if I'm dealing with developer clients, for example, there's often like an industry expectation of, like, well, this is, this is spec work. You, you do this for free. You don't, yeah. get, you don't get paid for it. How do, we, how do we set these conversations up so that we're not giving away the work? And what's going on that's actually allowing us to, to do that? Okay. So I, I'm dominating this at the moment. Sorry. And I'll run out and Eric, Eric will come in with the sage points. Eric's a bit more precise and <laughs> I'm a bit more passionate, but he's more to the point. So what, what's causing this is architects belief. Well, there's an industry thing that architects or builders will give away a lot of free advice and so do architects. And I'll tell you the other thing that, that, you know, so it's an industry issue. It's, it's a plague, which is plighting the industry. Yep. These ideas before I get back to the thing, but these ideas of competitions where architects submit <clears throat> their designs and if they win, they get to do it and everyone else loses and it just wastes their time. It's just the craziest thing anyone from outside architecture has ever seen. Oh, it is, it's, it's horrendous. It's, it, it is absolutely insane. It's, it's a plague on your industry. So what you're going to start doing as an industry is saying no, and I know it's hard sometimes you want, but imagine a builder saying to a builder, we want you to build it. It's a competition. We want you to build it. And if we like it, we'll keep it and we'll pay for it. And if we don't like it, we'll get you to knock it down and take it away. I mean, are you kidding me? So the, the, okay. So the other issue that's causing that is the fact that architects are being treated as a commodity item, right? And that's why you're getting fee resistance and someone else will do it cheaper and all this type of rubbish, right? Well, they do it cheaper. Yeah, but well, they do it better. So architects have to, they have to get themselves out of the commodity situation. They have to stop positioning themselves as a commodity. Um, stop talking about price. They have to do things that differentiates themselves as something special and as someone special. And as soon as you move yourself out of the pack of the commodity, you've got a chance, right? And it's not necessarily easy. It takes a bit of effort and it takes a bit of skill and some tools, but you've got to get out of the pack. Otherwise you're going to be stuck in that hamster wheel. Yeah. And so, and so how, how, I mean, the industry, you know, I mean, from my perspective, often I see so many hundreds of different architects. They're all brilliant. They're all super talented. Yeah. They're, you know, they're producing fantastic work. Yeah. How can we, begin to differentiate ourselves what are the things that make us what makes my practice different from this practice what are what are the sort of things that we're missing out here to make make ourselves stand out okay good question and eric can answer the next one i've just done a webinar on this a couple of weeks ago so i've got the notes all right so mm -hmm. uh, okay one thing i'll give you a couple of things you can do right one thing you can do is you can be a specialist in an area right so in any market in any market, think of the clients. There's some clients at the high end who want, what do they want? They want the best, right? They want the best. You've got a big chunk of people in the middle who are open to value if someone will, for goodness sake, explain to me why I should pay you more or why I should hire you. I'm open to, to that. And then you've got some people at the bottom who are just, you know, price shoppers, that's probably the nicest word for them. And they just, look, nothing wrong with them, but they're just cheap, right? And that's fine. Right? What you going to do is be the most appealing person to those who want the best, right? Now, what do they look for, these people? You gotta ask yourself this, in this particular market, what do they look for? Well, they're after the best. Right now, you've got to position yourself. And, and so how do, they, how do they pick who the best is? Well, they look at superficial things to find out who's the best, right? They might look, have you written a book? Um, are you a specialist? Have you been interviewed by Ryan on Business of Architecture UK? 
you know, if that would, that would, you know, that might position them. Um, yes, are you an, yeah, of course it would. Um, are you an educator? Those type of things. So they look at that type of stuff and you've got to surround yourself with this type of stuff which positions you as being a specialist in a particular area. You, you don't want to be a generalist. Well, people say to me, right, they say, I say, what type of architect are you? And they go, I'm a generalist. And they're quite proud of that. And they should be. It means I can do a lot of stuff in a lot of different areas, right? So they're multi-skilled. The problem with that is when the market's looking at someone who's multi-skilled and positions himself as a generalist, the first thing that comes up is that old saying, probably comes from England, jack of all trades, master of none, right? Yeah. You're just a jack. So you perceive that to be a strength. Your market perceives it to be a weakness, right? So even though you can do everything, you shouldn't be claiming to do everybody because it devalues you and it makes you look like a generalist. And unfortunately, that's not a great thing to be. Right. And this is, this is interesting because this is a conversation that comes up a lot with architects and a lot of architects want to be able to do, you know, part of the joy of, of architecture is to be able to, you know, one day I'm designing a house, the next day I'm designing something else or I'm doing like an installation or I'm doing, you know, some retail and there's a lot of, you know, how can, is that a good practice to do or what happens if we want, if we want to be involved in different sectors and, and we want to have that richness of doing different projects? Eric, you know the answer to this one. You should, so you can, you can have your cake and you can eat it too and, and Eric's going to tell you how to eat it and, and have it. <laughs> so can you re repeat that again? Because I, I, I was just thinking... Cake. Yeah. So, so, so many, so many architects will relish in the being able to work in different sectors and will really like, that's a, that's a big joy. Like, you know, one day I'm working on a, a house, yeah. the next day I'm working in, I'm doing shops and retails, but like that sounds like it's, it's the market killer. It makes us, it makes yeah. it very difficult. How can we, how can we have our cake and eat it? Okay. So the answer is that you can be a specialist in more than one area, but you need to talk to the particular market segment in a way that makes them feel like you understand exactly their problem, their challenge, their aspiration, their dream. Um, so let's just say you mentioned, uh, the, you know, I love doing homes and I love doing retail shops, okay? So you might have two different websites you know, one right. for each specialty. That would be one way. And maybe yeah. not hide the fact that you're the same firm, but just have them in two different places. So if they're, you're looking for a retail shop specialist who is going to um, improve the, uh, you know, the, the business value of, uh, in terms of the, uh, how much foot traffic comes in and, and the way that people spend time in the store and you just know how to merchandise and, and sort of set up an environment that people go, wow, you got to go visit this shop. It's really just so sweet. You know, you just spend time there, right? Okay. So if you want to be that specialist who's known for that, then maybe you have a separate website that's, you know, sh we are shops, you know, I, I mean, I'm just being facetious <laughs> there. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the other hand, you might, uh, uh, you know, then if you're a residential one and you're doing something that's, you know, just super comfortable homes, you know, ones that are just all cushy and carpeted. I mean, I don't know, I'm being s silly here, but, um, you know, you, you have something that's talking about it. You want a home that you feel just so relaxed as soon as you come in the door. All right, that's the message you're giving and you're not mixing that up. Now, in some cases, you can have two specialty areas or even more than two in the same website, you just have a choose your own adventure type thing on the page. Are you know? Are, are you interested in a new home, or are you interested in you know your your shop being refurbished? We do both. When they click on one, all of a sudden that page is talking all about the problems of shop owners, all about the problems of store franchise you know chains or whatever it is. Um, so the marketing message needs to be specific to the needs and aspirations and the problems of the people and organizations in that market. And one of the things that, you know, comes up often in the marketing, uh, you know, sort of common questions is, does marketing like the way we teach work in a B2B context? So, you know, you're a company, you're a firm doing professional services, and let's say that you're selling your services to, you know, a company that, that has a chain of shops. 
um, and they want to really, you know, up level their brand. They want to have a, a, an experience in their shops that, that people go, wow, I really like what they're doing there. Okay. So are you selling to a company? Well, yes, but who's in the company? Who makes the decisions? Is it their head of, um, you know, sales, you know, are they focused on like, we just got to need, we've got to get our shops working so that they, you know, we get more turnover. Uh, there is it is it something more related to marketing and branding is it something more the CEO who has a vision of we want to stand for something we want people to think of our company this way so who are you talking to and what are their particular desires or issues or challenges like God we look like everybody else on the block we want to be different we want this so when you're addressing your marketing to those people, and when you have meetings with those people, you wanna be a person. Now, I mean, maybe your company has five, 10, or 100 people in it, but ultimately, someone's gonna be meeting another human being. And so, that's where you need to find the common ground is, I'm a specialist, you are a person in this situation, as a firm, manager, leader, owner, you want certain things, I can help you fulfill your mission in your firm or you the couple that you're dealing with can have the home of your dreams where you can grow that family and feel right. so 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 how if you're an architect and you're you've got you know you're the master of ones you've, you've got one client in this industry one client in this industry one you're all, you're all over the place how do you find a niche what what are the what are the what makes a good niche how do you begin to, you know, become specialized? Uh, may I take this, Richard? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. So one thing you can do is you can look at your own portfolio and say, which are the projects that you are, you enjoyed the most, that you felt like just you were so happy and excited to do? Uh, which are the ones that maybe got the most enthusiastic response, people who just went, wow, you really knocked it out of the park, um, you know, on that one. So that's an interesting way because then you're connecting up your passion and obviously some level of success and skill and testimonials to an area. Um, now, you may say, well, it's just a home and people, they were so in love with it. Well, what is it about that home? Was it modern? Was it uh, classic, traditional? Was it a remodel? Was it, um, you know, was it on a big country property? Was it, a, you know, in a, a tiny little um, very tight lot in the city, you know, okay. So context, um, architectural style, uh, what were the challenges or aspirations that they had? Did they want really energy efficient thing that just they could feel proud of and tell our, their, their friends are, you know, our energy bills are half the, what they used to be, or, um, you know, what is it, uh, you know, that the automated home, you know, the, the, the something that has beautiful natural materials, um, you know, whatever it is. So if it's something that you have passion about, that's a great starting point. Now you can also look at what, um, you know, what fewer people are doing. Like you've been doing research on sustainable design, okay, and there are fewer firms out there doing that. Well, if you like doing that and there's less competition, you know, maybe go for that. Um, you know, look at what the market needs uh, you know, obviously, it's great if you can get out ahead of the market. So one of the things we're seeing a lot um, in the U.S., and I imagine it's happening in the U.K. as well, uh, would be um, aging in place. So, you know, the type of specialists who say, you know, can make a home where, you know, you can live in it for generations or you can live in it as you age and your kids can, you know, do this or you're, or or you can bring in your, you know, your aging parent and there's a beautiful you know, uh, accessory dwelling that is is part of it. I mean, uh, things that that relate to um, generational um, issues and challenges. Um, so, where have you had success? Where do you have with possibly less competition? Where is it a little bit more? Where does it take a little bit more special training or experience um, that not everybody can offer? Um, these are all ways that someone can differentiate and say, well. We do the best this. Uh, one of the classic things that Richard does is, is say, well, make a, a little exercise in your own mind, what you want to be known for. Mm. You know, this firm is known for providing such and such without 
some others. Richard, why don't you take this and, and elaborate a little on that? Well, yeah, I mean, it, you've got to sell it to yourself. If you're going to pick a niche and you want to be a specialist in something, you've got to sell it to your own firm first. So you've got to believe it. Right. So, you know, so you're coming up with a statement as to, you know, we are the number one company for this. It's not really something you necessarily say to anyone else, but you get very clear on how you want to be seen to your marketplace, right? So once you've got that clear statement for how you want to be seen to who, to who you want to be seen to, your market, um, you write up a very clear, specific statement, and then that's kind of your north. You know, you, you, then everything you create from that point on has got to reflect that or reinforce that. You don't have to necessarily say it, but it, it reinforces it. It's kind of your brand, if that makes sense. Right, like a, like a, like a generating statement or a context which everything's kind of coming from. Yeah, it's your thing that you stick to. Right. And so what, what makes a bad niche then? Because I often hear architects who perhaps young practices and they, they choose something that's really highly specialized, but then there might not, and it might be something that's very theoretical. Yeah. But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't land in the marketplace. Yep. Well, I had a couple of clients a few years ago in the UK and, and one guy was, he was a passive house expert. And it sounded like a great niche on the surface back then. And I don't know if it's any different now. But he had a real, you know, he even got known as a bit of a passive house specialist. But the problem was there wasn't that many people wanting it, you know. So there wasn't that many people who even knew it or understood what the word meant. And so being a specialist, there's got to be demand for it. You know, you can't, you can't be a specialist in something which no one wants. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> but you won't be one of those for very long. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a classic thing in marketing uh, that you want to focus on convincing people the minimum number of uh, mindset changes. So in other words, if someone knows they want a passive house design, so that and for those of you who may be less familiar, I understand that it's very highly energy efficient using certain strategies to you know, just make a home that does passive energy um, management. Uh, okay, so if someone already knows that, then all you have to do is convince them that you're the best one in your area to do it. Okay, so that's, that's a challenge because there may be a, two people down the block who do it, but at least you're only competing with the, those. But if they don't know that they need passive house, if they don't even know what that is, then first you have to convince them that passive house is really this amazing thing. And, you know, if you care about such and such, energy efficiency, then you want passive house as the approach. Then once they've got convinced about that, then you convince them that you're the best one to do that. So you want to, in terms of specialty, you don't want to convince them that they need something, or ideally, you know, if you, you want to find an easy way to convince them that they need your specialty or that your specialty is going to benefit them, um, and then that you are, of course, the best source of that. Now, one of the ways that, Richard, I know you've, you've created um, an interesting approach, which is to be the leader in a category of one. Yeah. So that is, that's a very different thing because then they may not know that they need it, but once you explain it, if you can make the, the case and people can self-identify, well, I really want luxury, eco, eco luxury. So something that's ecologically sound, you know, just a, a really sustainable design, just, you know, all of that stuff. And... I want the best. All right, so now maybe there's no one else doing eco lux, you know, so that's a style, right, that you've defined. Um, so if you're then the leader in something that you have created, well, if they want that, then they want you, right? <laughs> so, um, but of course that ties into, well, a lot of people like luxury and a lot of people like, you know, saving the planet or doing something responsible, you know, for the uh, uh, ecosystem. Um, so you can then, Say, if you want this combination, this special brew, then, you know, this is what's going You're to give it. So it's, it's interesting because, you know, as, as architects, we're often brought up with the, or we learn in education, the dictum that many great architects have espoused before us that, you know, the role of the architect is to give the client something that they never knew that they wanted. Mm. Um, this can kind of 
end up manifesting itself in, you know, in our marketing and nobody wants it because the client doesn't, doesn't know what it is. And it's a kind of, you know, it's just, it's this strange conflict. So once we've determined, you know, we've got a good niche, then what, how do we start to communicate? What are the, what are the mistakes that architects make typically with their mass communication and how can they start to get much more focused or how do they start structuring good strategic communication to a, to a niche market? Well, there's a sequence of things you need to do and, and without sounding completely self-serving, we go through it in an hour on a podcast, uh, not a podcast, a webinar. So I'll give you the, the one minute version, but if you want the 50 minute version where we go into the nuts and bolts and detail of exactly what to do, you need to come to the webinar. So at some, probably you'll I'll put, I'll, put, I'll put the link in the information in this podcast. Yeah. So, okay. You've worked out who you want. Now you've got to work out how you're going to get hold of them and get them to come to you. So you can either go chasing them, right? Like a fish spear fisherman, or you can put some bait in the water and get them to come to you. Right. Obviously bait in the water and having them come to you is going to be better. So how are we going to do that? Well, one of the best strategies we can use is we go into that market and we say, what are the problems or the questions that they've got? <clears throat> what is that particular category of client? What questions do they have? What problems do they have? <clears throat> and there's a nice little term. What's the pebble in their shoe? You know, when you walk along the street, you might have, you might have problems with your wife and problems with your bank and problems with everything else. But if you've got a pebble in your shoe, that's the only thing you really care about at that moment. <laughs> so, it should be much bigger things, but it's not. It's the pebble. So if you can identify what is the pebble in the shoe for those people and then create a little product or a, a piece of information which helps people remove that pebble, they're going to come to you, right? Now, what's the pebble for your market? I don't know because I don't know what your market is, right? It's a bit of an art form finding it. But when you find it, you're going to get them all to come to you, right? And when they all come to you, you don't have a client. You just have someone who says, hey, here's my name. Here's my contact details. And I give you permission to communicate with me and help me solve this problem. You know, maybe it's a little report or a mind map or a checklist. It can be something simple, right? And then from there, now that we've got, out, got their name, we then need an ongoing series of things to look to escalate the relationship. So what's the next step we want to move them to? We, want them, we might want to move them to a meeting, obviously, at some point, the keen ones, right? So we build in something that says, okay, you had this specific problem. I hope I've solved it for you. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But if I haven't solved it for you, we've got this little meeting here where I can look at your specific situation and maybe I can solve it one on one because this is the general advice, but I can give you specific advice. So now you get them one on one and they book a little free meeting and you just work on one thing. But from there, now you've gone, you've got their name, you've got their contact details on the first thing. And now the second thing, you've got a little meeting with them. And, and if that works well, you, you, you then might have enough, you know, you escalate it from there, but that's a good way to get started by, and, and notice at this point, you haven't sold anything. Yeah. Sold nothing. All you've done is you've found out a problem that a lot of people in that market have, and you've created a small thing, which is quick and fast and easy that solves it. So you built yourself some credibility and then you've invited them to have an, you know, a face to face meeting or a phone meeting with you, which might help them just on the next second step. And from there, you know, you, you're talking to them and that's all most architects need is just to get that conversation going. They're usually often away from them. Right. And so what are the sort of mistakes that you'll commonly see with architects and their, and their communications when they, are, when they go out and they try and speak with a mass market? Um, what, I mean, I'm, and specifically, I'm thinking about on their websites. Like what are the things that architects will do that typically don't work? <coughs> but yeah, you, see, you see a lot of them doing it. Oh, all of them. Uh, architects are terrible. They're not the only professional that's terrible, but they are, they are a professional that's terrible. So what they do is they talk about themselves, right? Right. We this, we that, we this, we that, and they end up weeing all over themselves. <laughs> right? <laughs> You've got to flip it around to them, 
right? What's for you? You know, do you have this problem? Are you trying to answer this question? Do you need help with this thing? Right? Flip it around for how you can help, you know, flip it around to them. They know their problems and they know what they don't, well, they don't know what they don't know, but they know what they're scared of and they know what questions they have. So focus on those things. Stop shoving your portfolio on page one, like, you, like you're turning up there and you're opening up your, you know, you English guys and woman, you know, the old, the, the, the peddler in the street who opens up his, his, his flashes jacket and he's got all his watches and his perfume and, you know, oh there, governor, you know, have I got a deal for you? Stop, <laughs> stop, right? You don't even know them. Just help them. Just focus on them, you know, let them know that you understand their situation, you understand some of their problems, put the jack, close the jacket up and, and just start talking about their problems and maybe here's a few ways we can help you if, you, if any of these things are facing you. Put your portfolio away. It's not, it's too early, you know. <clears throat> I'll just give you another example. That would be like going to dinner with someone for the, on a first date and standing there and showing, you know, what do you think? What do you think of that? You know, showing yeah. them the guns at the dinner. It's too early. They might be impressed with that at some point, but not on the first meeting. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's it's really interesting because I mean that that's typically how I mean architects. You know, we're kind of notoriously famous for wanting to impress other architects more than our clients. You are pleasers. Architects are pleasers, which is great. Which makes you great people but it makes you weak in, in some respects and, and too open to giving too much away because you think if everyone likes you, they'll hire you and they won't. Some of them might, but if you know, they'll just use you. Mm. They'll take your stuff away to someone else who's a bit cheaper and they'll rip you off basically. And it happens all the time and we've got to stop it. Yeah, no, totally, 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 totally. I mean, th this is, this is something that, uh, you know, it, in all, architects that I end up speaking to so much, so much of the industry, there was this kind of, uh, there's a big industry pain yep. about the lack of fees, how yep. much architects get paid, how we're constantly, we're now competing with other specialists, other yep. industries, project managers, you know, architectural um, drafting company or, or con contractors who've got in-house, you know, drafters and things like that. So it's all kind of taken uh, management consultants, all these different types of professions that are sort of taking away the remit of the architect and you know, the way that we try and solve it is yep. by giving away our best ideas for free. Oh, exactly. And, and the problem you have, the other problem you have is no one really knows what architects do. Right. You guys do so much. You are so multi-skilled. You, you, you know, you like the one man band that plays the drums and, has the symbol and toot toot. You are multi-skilled. You are generous in so many different areas. Um, but we don't, I'm talking about us people who haven't lived it for, you know, like you have, you, we don't, we think you draw nice pictures. You know, we think you've got a black pen and, and large architects have big pieces of paper and you will do that, hand it to a builder and everything will happen. We do not know the depth and breadth of all the things that architects do. And that's the problem because, because architects don't teach people what they do, you know? So you're right. Architects have to get good at marketing. I'm sorry for those of you who hate to hear that, but you've got to, you've got to be able to, and mark, just marketing is just communicating your value, communicating value and make no mistake. Architects do have value. They are massively important and they had massive, your clients are going around getting rich off the stuff you guys do, right? Yeah. They're getting rich off you. And yeah. yet, on the, on the other hand, you're being screwed down on your fees. They're making millions and you're getting screwed down on your fees. What the hell's going on, right? So, we've got to fix it. Yeah. You know? no, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's 
really interesting when we start looking at you know the sort of profit margins that developers will be making or or how you know and the value that architects are contributing with their depth of knowledge and expertise to making these projects viable and yet we're still arguing over doing bits of work for free or you know working on hourly charges and all sorts of stuff there's a concept i talk about uh called return on design right return on design so if you're work work with developers or anyone really you want to be able to communicate your value your your return on design if i spend a dollar and 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 i learn from you that you can you know turn that into five dollars right you know that's good i'll give you i'll give you a dollar all day long right but at the moment it's i give you a dollar and i really don't know what i'm getting back right? Because you don't tell me, you just say, I can, I can do, you know, here's my portfolio. Well, what does that mean for me? I don't know. But if you can get, you, if you can find ways to quantify your value, right? Whether it's residential, commute, if you can find ways to quantify your value, you're in business. You will never be nickel dimed again because you, you've got to collect your evidence like a lawyer building a case, right? But if you can show people that, when I, when I design a building, right, here's what you pay me, but here's what it's worth. You know, if other people design it, it's generally worth that. That's the average industry. If you can show the increased value that you bring to a project and you, you know, you're going to have to collect your evidence. It won't be easy, but I'll tell you what, there's no rush. Collect your evidence, show people how you add value and you know, you can do return on design. You'll clean up because you'll be the only architect talking about return on design. Amazing. And so, so how do you two help architects then? How do you, what's the process that they go through when they start working with you? Is it like an agency or? Mr. Bob Rowe. All right. <clears throat> yeah. So the architect marketing Institute, we have a variety of services. Um, starts out with the call. So uh, want to encourage those of you who've been watching or listening to us um, to book a call. Uh, Ryan will have a link uh, for that. In the call, we basically, uh, one of our senior staff will talk about where you're at and where you wanna go to, what are the problems you're facing, and uh, give you a basic roadmap for the choices that you have um, within our program or outside. Um, Now, uh, one of our prime options uh, that we offer architects is a, a program we call the Sunshine Island Express. Now, Richard has a, a whole story of the village of Archville, and Sunshine Island is the uh, quarter of that village where the architects have really got it made. They're doing projects they love doing, artistically fulfilling or personally fulfilling, and for healthy fees, maybe very good fees or maybe just really satisfying fees. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, so if you want to be on Sunshine Island and you want to get there, you know, a, a, efficiently, effectively on the express train, we have the Sunshine Island Express program, which involves a combination of, uh, yeah, toot toot. That's <laughs> living uh, station soon. <laughs> All aboard. Yeah. Um, so in that program, we uh, teach theory um, that uh, are the foundation for uh, what you need to do in your firm. We help you set up some marketing assets, so some components that we feel every architect should have, um, and then promote those assets, those uh, make yourself visible. So the program is a combination of training and implementation, um, and uh, we find that uh, people who take action and go through the program and actually do the work have remarkable success. We've been accumulating, you know, over the last few years, tremendous number of success stories of people who have changed their mindset, changed the way they think about themselves, the way they think about marketing, are being seen differently in their market, are becoming more and more in demand, able to pick and choose um, their clients. Um, and that gives us great pride, uh, you know, when we see that happen. Yeah. Um, I'm not- also- so I was just, I was just going to say, I've spoken to a couple of uh, sort of graduates of the AMI programs. I spoke with um, Barry and Salvador very recently mm-hmm. who, were, who were saying how much it's really shifted their entire paradigm of way of looking at, you know, of practicing as an architect and actually really prioritizing, you know, we've got to be marketers first 
before architects and actually just accepting that and not fighting it and embracing it has been like the biggest freedom and has just opened up a whole wealth of, you know, new opportunities. Yeah. Marketing, marketing is fun. Like marketing is good fun. So, you know, I think, I think one of the things that people get when they come in to work with us is they actually learn to enjoy marketing. Yeah. You know, they get a lot of confidence at the moment, you know, before they start, they're usually scared of the concept. They're scared of selling themselves that they'll look like a salesperson. Um, after a while, we beat it out of them and they, they have fun. It's marketing is a fun, it's a cool thing. I mean, it's good fun. And you make a lot more money doing marketing than you do, you know, good marketing. Than you do anything else. So, you know, it's, it, as Eric said, it's part implementation, part teaching. If you give an architect a fish, you'll feed her for the day. But teach her how to fish and we'll feed her for a lifetime. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. I think that's a, I think that's a good place to, uh, to end the conversation there. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much for listening. And of course, don't forget to book your one-to-one breakthrough session with the Architects Marketing Institute. This could be one of the most important conversations that you have around your business this year. So follow the link in the information and grab that opportunity. And I look forward to hearing all about it. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.